not everybody needs uh, stability in their shoe. And it really has nothing to do with your weight or whether you have flat feet or high arches, but more to do with your individual running style. That's Dr. Derek. He's an avid runner with more than 100 pairs of running shoes. He also writes shoe reviews at roadtrailrun.com. I asked him for a concise layman guide on how to choose a pair of running shoes, and the rest of this video is his answer. If you have any questions, do put them in the comment section below. We might do a Q&A session if there are many areas we need to follow up on. And if you find this video useful, remember to give us a thumbs up. It's feedback for us that you'd like to see more of such videos in the series Sports Science Simplified. This is Jing Chip, founder of Allset, video and personal training company. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about how to choose the right pair of running shoes today. And if you think about it, the main three things that matter are how cushioned the shoe is, how much grip there is on the shoe, and uh, whether or not there's anything in the shoe that helps with stability if you need it. There are many kinds of shoes on the market. There are those that are very focused on cushioning. This is an example of a cushion shoe, very thick uh, midsole. Uh, another brand, another example of a cushion shoe, very thick midsole. And they are basically very useful for helping to reduce the impact of running. So you will want something with a very thick midsole for runs that are a bit longer, or runs where you don't really plan to go very hard, or runs where you're just kind of uh, doing some kind of recovery. So an, a very easy run where you're not focused on pace. Whereas if you're going for a, a hard workout or a race, then you will want something a bit lighter so you can get away with less cushioning. You're sacrificing the cushioning but uh, getting some benefit in terms of uh, efficiency and speed. An example of a racing shoe would be something like this. So racing shoes generally tend to have very thin midsoles. They are much lighter. All the benefits of cushioning are kind of sacrificed in the interest of giving you a lighter, faster feeling shoe. Uh, this is another example of a racing shoe. Again, very thin midsole. Uh, tends to feel much lighter on your feet compared to a thick cushion shoe. Different terrains that we run on sometimes have different requirements. So if you're mostly running on road, then you wouldn't need a lot of outsole grip. But if you're going on gravel or light trails or even to um, rocky terrain, then you will want something with a bit more grip, a, a little bit more uh, stability on the outsole. There is actually a downside to having too much rubber because rubber actually weighs about six times as much as normal foam. So the more rubber you have, the heavier the shoe is going to be. But also the rubber actually adds a lot of harshness to the underfoot feel. So if you look at this shoe, for example, there is very little rubber on the outsole. Uh, most of it is just soft midsole, but the downside is because there's very little rubber on the outsole, when it gets wet, it can feel a little bit slippery. The same thing applies when you're running on sand or gravel or light trails or even grass. It's going to feel very slippery if there isn't enough rubber on the outsole. The benefit of having less rubber, as I said earlier, is the shoe actually feels softer under your feet when you're running. If you compare that to this shoe, you can see there is a lot of rubber on the outsole. There is a lot of focus in terms of durability and grip uh, on the outsole. Now, this actually, it does make the underfoot feel a little bit firmer, but you're going to get a lot more traction when you're on soft surfaces, unstable surfaces. And it actually adds, adds a lot of durability to the outsole as well. So you would expect something like this to have a much longer lifespan in terms of outsole durability compared to this shoe. Okay, these two shoes are made by the same brand and they weigh within five grams of each other, but they have very different purposes. So the same thing applies to racing shoes. So I chose these two shoes, they are both by Nike, but they happen to have very different approaches to the outsole. This is the Streak 6. It uses blown rubber on the outsole Blown rubber is actually quite good on wet surfaces. It's quite sticky on wet surfaces. It has quite good grip. But if you compare that to this is the Zoom Speed Racer, you have a much more grippy outsole on this one. 
How you choose your shoe really depends on what kind of surface you're planning to run on. If you're just going to be running on the track, I think both shoes will be fine. If you're running on the road, both shoes will probably be fine as well. But if there's some uh, degree of uh, off-road uh, running, for example, if you're running on sand or, or light trails or grass, then this one will probably be a more useful outsole for you. These dots are made of polyurethane. They're very firm, but also provide a lot of traction for when, when you're not running on the road. Okay. The last thing that we want to talk about is actually stability. Not everybody needs uh, stability in the shoe and it really has nothing to do with your weight or whether you have flat feet or high arches but more to do with your individual running style so if you've never really run before I would suggest always start off with a neutral shoe and see if that works first because uh, a neutral shoe allows you to run how you naturally would run and doesn't force you to run in a way that you don't normally run. So try that out first if you've never had any injury problems or never tried neutral shoes before. See if that works for you. Uh, a lot of people with uh, flat feet uh, tend to naturally gravitate towards stability shoes. I don't think that's necessarily the right approach because uh, a lot of people with flat feet do not need stability. Uh, having low arches doesn't mean you necessarily over pronate all the time. Having said that, if you do have problems with overpronation, and overpronation basically means that when you land, your ankle goes inwards just before it pushes off, then you may want something that has some stability in it in the shoe to prevent you from doing that. Now, uh, a lot of racing shoes are very neutral. That means they don't have any stability at all because they assume that you're racing, you're going pretty fast. For example, if you look at uh, the Nike racing shoe back here, there is exposed midsole over this area and it's a lot softer than the rubber in front. So what that means is there is no support over the arch of the, sh of the shoe and that means that if you're going to overpone it, you're going to roll inwards very easily in this shoe. Whereas uh, if you look at this trainer here, uh, this by Hoka. It doesn't really have a specific stability element, but you, what you, I would like to show you is that the, the shoe uses a kind of bucket seat design. So the midsole is wider than the section that your foot rests in. And basically your foot sinks in to the midsole and the entire section where your foot sits in actually sits lower than the height of the midsole. So the midsole rises up on both sides. I don't know if you can get a good picture here. The midsole rises up on both sides. So it's not inherently intended to be a stability shoe, but because the midsole rises up on both sides, it will tend to resist any sideways movement. So if you need that, this will be a good option. This is the Hoka Vanquish. Different brands have different approaches to providing stability. In the past, the conventional wisdom was to use a firmer section of midsole on the inside so that it doesn't compress as much as your foot lands on the area. Uh, but lately, a lot of brands have gone towards something called dynamic stability. So uh, what that means is it gives stability without actually having something very firm on the inside of the shoe. So one example is this bucket seat design. So your foot sits lower inside the shoe. Another option would be something like what Brooks does. Brooks has guide rails on some of their models, which are firmer sections of foam on the outside of the shoe. And that again helps to prevent the foot from moving too much when you're uh, running in the shoe. That's all for today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, remember to give us a thumbs up. Till next time, take care.